We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. Shamba Shepard Safari. So what are some new things that you're looking at or trying out? I mean, are you going to provide that kind of service? Would you do that SMS service? I think uh, you've got some other um, ideas uh, that are coming along as well. We have lots of ideas. <laughs> so the one thing that's happening right now is we're about to launch our mobile information service called the iShamba. So the SMS database as it is, is very manual and it's, it's just about to get not only messages from Kenya but also from Uganda and Tanzania mm -hmm. and we, can, we see it's going to have a problem mm -hmm. handling all that traffic. So we have that and then we also have this um, dearth of information for, for farmers. They can get it from radio, they can get it from TV but then having a problem getting it from anywhere else. So we are launching iShamba and it will be a subscription-based SMS service. So instead of you get it when every time you get a message, it gets deducted from your airtime and then that's really annoying. Um, you pay a set fee every month and you get five messages every week. And the messages will be tailored to your location, what you want to know about, um, and what time of year it is. So if you are in Western Kenya and the rains are about to start and you want to grow maize, you should be getting land preparation messages. That will also have, as well as a push SMS, it will also have a pull SMS, so you can write a message on an SMS and send it to us and we will be able to respond within 48 hours. It will also have a call center. So if you're subscribed to iShamba, you can then access a call center, which we have um, staffed with agronomists and vets. Um, so they have access to a lot of content and they also have a lot of content in their own heads. At backstopping that are various partners, information partners. Um, some of them are current partners of Shamba Shape Up. So that's our, that's our new baby that's about to start walking. We then have three programs, new program ideas that we want to get off the ground. The first one, which we look to get funding from USAID from, the proposal is just going in, um, is called Don't Lose the Plot. So it will be a young farmer competition so four young farmers, each on a plot of land and, and next to each other, so they're under the same conditions. And they have to write a business plan for how they're going to run that land over a year. And it's going mm -hmm. to be one to two acres. They will each have a mentor, and there will be a panel of experts and a sort of advisory mm -hmm. panel to oversee them. Um, and then we'll follow them over the year as they farm the land and see how successful they are. Um, and the person who is most successful in terms of business management, environmental sustainability and farm management will either win the plot or a plot in uh -huh. their home location. So that's to try and get used to think about new ways of um, farming and that farming is not only dirty and it actually can be quite profitable. The other thing we'll cover in that series is going on to farms in the rural areas where the older the parents are sitting on the farm. Now they can't give the farm to one of their children because it's a complicated culture of land inheritance. So they, uh, one of their children can't come and farm the land because all the other siblings will get really ticked off and they won't like that. This, the children are waiting for the parents to die so they can access the land, which causes actually does cause some deaths in Kenya. Um, and the young, the youth can't access the job market because there aren't many jobs coming out every year and they can't access land to farm. So what we're going to show is that the youth can write a lease agreement with the parents or with other elderly people in the, in the area mm -hmm. and lease the land for a set amount of time. Mm -hmm. And then the production is there so that the older couple get some income, mm -hmm. yeah. the younger have access to land. Uh -huh. So that's in one. That's called Don't Lose the Plot. The second one is Shamba Chef. So that will be a nutrition-focused reality cooking program where we go on to farms with um, either a famous chef or a nutrition expert 
and we go around the farm and we, um, we with the with the mother usually, and we'll go and pick some crops out of the farm, and she can show us how what her what her meal is that she usually feeds her family, and then we'll go around and pick a new selection of crops, and go to the market, go to the seed supplier, and say, well, these ones are also good, and then show her how to cook a nutritious, tasty meal using those. Mm-hmm. And then what we'll do is we'll supply, we'll have maybe five female farmers, all neighbours. We'll get them all lambed up and give them all the ingredients for this yeah. nutritious meal and then get them to cook the meal. And whoever does the best wins something. Because um, as you know, reality competitions work really well. So that's, that's another one. We're, we're, we're trying <laughs> to get off the ground. And then the third one is a uh, women's chat show. So having a panel of women, so um, urban ladies, rural ladies, farming and business people, so a farmer's wife or a farmer, um, a businesswoman, and maybe a a shopkeeper, uh, maybe someone who owns an agro-dealer. Get them all in and then stimulate discussions, ask them questions, poke the hornet's nest a bit, get policy makers in, um, and watch clips from from our various Mm -hmm. programs and get them to critique them and analyse them to try and get the gender debate on the front burner in Kenya and get women to realise that it's not going to happen without you actually stepping in there and, and having, making an mm-hmm. effort. So those are our, those are our three TV programs that okay. we are looking at. Yeah. Okay. Well, you've got lots of great ideas. <laughs> Can you give a concrete example of where a donor or a sponsor has asked you to really cover a topic that farmers that doesn't fit your format or that just isn't of interest to farmers? So we have, there are two two examples. Um, One is when we we were asked to uh, talk about family planning on Shamba Shape Up. The only way we could see that working would be to talk about how many children are you going to have and how many times can you divide this one acre plot and how can your children make money out of Mm -hmm. of that plot. that question is a bit overpowering if you have a crew of 13 people standing there in your home asking you that question. It's, you can't generate a debate about it. You can do that in a drama series like our soap opera, but you can't do that in reality TV. The second is um, when people want to talk about climate change. Now, if you went to a Kenyan farmer and you said, how is climate change affecting you? <laughs> they would probably know what climate change is because it's been bandied about in the press so much. But in terms of how it affects them, they would, mm. it's, they can't contextualize it. So we abandon the words climate change and we use the words um, irregular weather. So are you, h- how has weather changed in your area recently? And they will immediately be able to tell you it rains less, it, the rains don't come when they're meant to. But the community wants us to use the word climate change. So we've just pushed back on that. So we're just mm. not going to do that. It's not climate change, it's irregular weather, yeah. So some of the other lessons or surprises you've had along the way, any others? My biggest surprise, because I'm not an internet uh, person, um, you know, I'm a rural farming girl, um, is social media. So we had someone come in and she's done an extremely good job in um, increasing our Facebook page. So we went from 3,000 fans to 43,000 in a year. Um, and I always said, well, Facebook, I mean, really? Really? We didn't need Facebook. And she said, we do need Facebook because it's the way the youth in Kenya are now accessing their information. Mm-hmm. They're all over it. If they have a, a smartphone or they have access to an internet mm-hmm. cafe or a computer, they're on Facebook. And our Facebook page has been phenomenally successful. It's a peer-to-peer information sharing platform at the moment. Um, we do competitions on there. People ask questions. People post a picture of their cow and they say, what's wrong with my cow? It's not giving me any milk. Um, and that, for us, has shown that we need to be very flexible in how we reach people. So we're now um, restructuring our African Knowledge Zone YouTube channel to make it a lot easier to find mm-hmm. clips. We're going to break down all of the episodes into short clips that you can watch on your phone. So sort of low resolution, one to two minute clips on specific topics. So if you're online and you want access information about agriculture, you can do that. Um, so flexibility is key. You can't go out there thinking, I'm going to do this. 
and it's going to work. And then if it fails, you think, I'm just going to carry on doing it because I said I'm going to do it and I've got funding to do it. You've got to be able to say, this works, this doesn't work. We're going to go with this and give up mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, yeah. thank you very much. If the, anybody in the audience is interested to learn more about Shamba Shape Up, they can go to uh, the website of the Media Company um, or look at the links that are related to this video.